Hi there, Paul C from WZ2K.co.uk here with another video tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can work with presets inside Lightroom, how we can install them, configure our own, save them, and export them to share with other people. First of all, let's take a look at what a preset actually is. A preset in Lightroom is effectively a bunch of settings that you've created that you want to save and apply to multiple images and recall them at any point without having to manually record that information. So let's take a look at a preset that we've got shipped with Lightroom itself just to show you what's happening. If we take a look over on the right hand side of the develop module you'll see that we've got all the settings that are currently applied to this specific image. And If we take a look on the left hand side you can see we've got the presets panel. Now I've got a few extra ones loaded in from uh, different places but let's just take a look at a Lightroom B&W black and white filter preset. Let's just expand that and you see if we take our mouse over any of these, the preview window above will show us what the image would look like by applying that particular preset. So let's just choose the blue high contrast filter. And when I click on that, just take a look over on the right hand side at the actual control panels. And you should see that quite a few of the settings will change based upon the preset that we've selected. So there we go. You can see that a lot of this information has changed. The clarity has been increased considerably, so it gives us a sort of a pseudo um, infrared kind of effect. The highlights have been dropped right down, shadows have been left as they are, whites decreased, blacks decreased, but the contrast has been pumped up right the way up to about 44%. If we drop down and see some of the additional things we've got on there, we can see that we've probably got some settings inside the black and white mix panel has been changed to work with a specific image. Now, Presets are not the be-all and end-all. They're not, once you clicked it, you're stuck with it. You can now easily use that as the basis of your work, and then you can come in and adjust these things to your, whole, your own sort of taste. So let's take a look. If I don't like the way that the clarity is working on this particular image, I can decrease that and actually give it a, a sort of soft glow effect. And the same goes with the contrast. I can reduce that down. And I can start tweaking this till I get the exact effect that I'm looking for from this particular image. We can go back over to the presets and choose a different one. Let's try the blue filter this time. And as you can see, that gives us a completely different set of settings with inside the actual develop module. Okay, so we've seen how we can work with presets inside Lightroom. Let's take a look at how we can actually create our own presets inside Lightroom. So let's just reset this back to its uh, original. Let's take it back so we've got rid of the previous effect on it. Okay, so I'm going to create my own black and white filter on this one just so we can use this as the basis of our own personal uh, preset inside Lightroom. So first of all, let's just switch this over to black and white so we're working with exactly what we want to work with. Okay, so we've got a nice little start here. Let's just reset the clarity and everything else back to where they were originally. This is where the image was pretty much shot. So what we need to do is we need to work with this, get it to the way we want it to look, and then save that out as a preset. So first thing I want to do is just reduce the exposure slightly. It's a little bit overexposed for my liking. Let's take that down a small amount. Reduce the clarity because I want to get that sort of soft glow effect. And we're not really losing anything in, in the whites. But let's just reduce that down a little bit for where the clarity kind of softens those out and gives them the glow. So let's just reduce our whites ever so slightly zoom back out and we'll take our highlights down ever so slightly so we don't get any blown highlights let's take our whites back up a little bit yeah that's looking good okay if I'm reducing the clarity it gives a lovely soft glow effect but what it tends to do then is it loses some of the the structure a little bit of the contrast. So what I'll tend to do is if I reduce the clarity to get the soft glow, I'll just increase my contrast ever so slightly to bring just a bit of punch back into it. Okay, that's a good starting point. Next thing I want to make sure we've got on there is that because I'm shooting with a particular lens, I can just ensure that we've got the lens correction is set on this. As you can see, that's already been done prior to us creating this particular effect. But what I do want to do is I want to switch the effects panel and I want to introduce a slight uh, vignetting around the edges to sort of draw attention in this particular type of image to the center where the subjects are. 
And again, this just tends to bring in a little bit more contrast, a bit of focus into the image, and I'll, I'll use that quite a lot. So we'll just say that, okay, I'm happy with that now. That's pretty much done everything that I want. So we're ready now to go and save that as a preset so we can apply it to other images. And before we actually go and save that, I just want to sort of clarify why we use a preset when, if we're working with a bunch of images like this, we could easily set the settings that we want on this particular image, switch back into the actual preview module, and then I could easily just choose that image that we just worked on as the first image, and then hold the control key down and select additional images and then just click the sync settings button. Yep, you're right, that works very, very well. And it works well if you're working with just a bunch of images like this, they're all inside the same session or inside the same collection. Problem lies when you want to apply this to images that are not part of that same collection. And then you've got to sort of start making a note of what those pictures are, creating additional collections and so on. So while you can do it that way, it's not the best way of working if you want to recall these settings at future dates. So let's go back to the original image now. Press D to go back into the develop module. All our settings are already in there. So let's just go and save that now as a preset. So with the image selected, if we go to the presets panel and we'll click on create new preset. Before we do that, I want to make sure I got user preset selected. Click on the plus, and that'll bring up the new develop preset dialog box. Now you can see that at the moment it's set as preset name untitled, which folder to put it in. And then we've got a list of all the different settings and checkboxes for each of those. Now, when we create a preset, there are certain things that we might do to an image, such as cropping, reducing the noise and things like that, that we don't need to apply to every single image. So we can specify whether we do or don't want to apply those as part of our preset. So what I can do is I can say, well, under the lens correction, I don't want to apply the lens profile corrections because obviously we don't know what lens we use in the future. So while I've applied that to this specific image, I may not want to apply it to the next one shot with a different lens. So we'll just leave that unchecked, leave the transform. Lens vignetting we'll leave checked because we want to create that vignette effect on the edges. We'll take off chromatic aberration because again, that's something that's generally applied as part of a specific lens when you're taking your shots. And effects, yeah, we leave those as they are. Noise reduction, we don't want that. There's no graduated filters. In this instance, there's no split toning. Black and white mix hasn't been adjusted, but we may have done that with the black and white. And like I say, I could go through all these. Sharpening, we'll take off because I haven't actually done any of that. But we'll leave the rest as they are. We'll specify this goes into the user preset folder and we'll give it a name. If I could spell it. So there we go, sample preset. And we click on create. That's now added that into our sample presets folder under the presets panel on the left hand side. And we can now apply that to any other image we want and use that as the basis for our edits. So let's just see that in, in action. Switch back over to see all my images. Let's find an alternative image. Let's just choose that one. We'll open that up. Press D to go to the develop module. Hold our mouse over that preset. Give it a click and that's now applied it to that particular image. And as I showed you right back at the beginning of this video, we could easily come in then and start tweaking this to work with this particular image over the previous one if we find that it doesn't work exactly as we want it to. It's a starting point, not a one-click wonder. So that's how easy it is to create your presets. The next thing we'll take a look at is how we can actually save those out to share them with other people, and alternatively how we can load in presets that we may have downloaded or purchased and found online. Okay, let's actually load a, a preset into Lightroom now. Easiest thing to do is we want to go into the user presets for this example. So I'll click on that then right click and choose import. That'll bring up your dialog box that allows you to search through for the actual file you want to import. And as you can see, they have a file extension of LR template. So there's one I've created previously. All I need to do is select it, click open. That's now inside my user presets and automatically applied for me. So as you can see, we can switch through the different presets. As you can see, each one looks a little different. And that's how easy it is to actually import a preset. Alternatively, let's take a look at how we can export the preset to share it with other people, share it with your other systems you may have running Lightroom, your laptop and so on, or just save it just in case anything happens to your Lightroom installation and you want to call back up all the presets that you created. 
much the same way as we import we just right click on the one the actual um, preset we want to export just choose the export option click export and we'll just put that to the desktop and just give it a name click on save and that's it done so easy to import easy to export easy to create incredibly versatile and very very useful well i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and we'd love to see you around at the wz2k.co.uk website and on the forums join us on twitter and facebook and if you haven't already found out we've just released a free ebook a practical guide to gig and live band photography that's available for free download over at wz2k.co.uk pop on over there sign up to our mailing list download the file enjoy the book till next time take care if you haven't already downloaded it, check out the new wz2k.co.uk ebook, A Practical Guide to Gig and Live Band Photography. Click the link below to download your copy today for free.